So we're doing FPV with the Sky Hunter today. Um, and I got off to a rough start. I think when I get this Dragon Link too close to the antenna, the video just completely goes away. Like, it's weird. Sometimes it'll be fine, and then other times it'll just go completely black. Um, and I was getting that in the beginning, and I wasn't quite sure why. Because it's been a long time since I've flown this plane. But now I think I've just got to stay over here away from the ground station. Um, I've had this plane for about probably two and a half or three years. And I just haven't gotten around to flying it very much. I don't even think I've done a video with it. I might have. I can't remember. But it's a good plane for long distance FPV. And that's what I'm trying today. I'm out here in a place called Skull Valley. Um, it's basically just near the Great Salt Lake in the middle of nowhere. And it's probably a great place to do long-range FPV except there is a uh, an area of restricted airspace out towards where I'm flying right now because there's a military base out there called Dugway Proving Grounds but I should have about 15 miles until I hit restricted airspace so I won't go more than 15 miles out um, but other than that this valley is really just empty I'll do a little turn here so that you can see it just kind of consists of patches of bushes and salt and really nothing else and there's a road that goes through it as you can see below other than like a few little farms or something there's really nothing out here until you get to the military base at the end of the valley so i'm just cruising along it's pretty smooth up there right now here's a view of my ground station it's basically, give you a little tour of it. This is a video aerial systems, 1.3 gigahertz circularly polarized patch antenna. And then I have a hobby wireless 1.3 gigahertz receiver on the back. And then down here I have this monitor. It's a little uh, DVR screen for backup, just in case my video goggles fail. And then over here I have a separate DVR that's actually recording the video that comes back. And then on this side I have a video splitter um, that basically splits the video and sends it to all the different devices. And then over here I have a big uh, three cell, 8,000 milliamp hour LiPo powering it all. And then I'm just using Fat Shark video goggles. So I do have a low pass filter on the video transmitter. I should probably get one on the receiver since I'm getting this interference. I'm also doing something that's probably not that smart right now. And that is flying long range FPV going downwind first. I have the wind to my back right now flying away from home, which is probably not a good idea because I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take me to come back i'm feeling pretty confident because i have probably more than enough battery to get out to the end of the valley or at least get out before i hit restricted airspace um the sky hunter is carrying two 8000 milliamp hour three cell packs so 16 amp hour three cell of power and that's those are big batteries so i should have a lot of power it looks like my video signal is fairly strong but there is some noise this uh this plane actually has two fpv cameras there's the one that you're seeing now that's uh in the nose of the plane and then there's this one that you can switch to and this one's actually connected to the rudder channel it's supposed to be on a two axis gimbal with tilt and yaw but right now only the yaw servo is working that's weird Oh, I'll switch back. So like I said, I'm flying downwind right now on only eight, about eight and a half amps, which is not very much. So I'm barely using any power and I'm not even descending in altitude. So I'll just keep going here. I think the farthest I've ever gone is about eight miles. So this is definitely gonna be a record breaking day for me. I really haven't gone that far. I haven't done that much long range FPV. So there's this little mountain range straight ahead. That's kind of like a foothill to the larger Stansbury mountains. Oh yeah, here's a cool point. So if you remember, for those of you who are subscribers, if you remember that behemoth uh, flying wing narrated FPV video I did a few weeks ago, um, or I guess a few months ago at this point, I flew up to Deseret Peak, which is straight ahead. And now you're seeing it from the backside. That's, uh, I think, an 11,000 foot peak surrounded by 
barren wasteland, which is I think is pretty cool. The lower backside of this little foothill is about the 15 mile mark, and that's about as far as I can legally go without getting into restricted airspace. That's too bad about that tilt camera pan and tilt. The servo must have come unplugged. It's kind of nice too, because normally I can tilt up and look and see if the GoPro is recording. The, the purpose of that little camera on there is to look up and see clouds, like the bottoms of clouds, so that I can know um, if I'm like coming up to cloud base. Because I initially wanted to use this plane for like high altitude FPV um, and like go into cumulus clouds like isolated thunder shower clouds in the spring and summer times, but I never did that. And I wouldn't be able to right now because my dumb servo is broken. I've only used, let's see, 4,140 4, milliamp hours of power and I have 16,000. So I'm doing well on battery. So all loaded up, this plane weighs six pounds, 13 ounces. So almost seven pounds. And that's with the two batteries and a GoPro in the front. I normally don't always fly with two batteries. You can run it off one eight amp hour uh, three cell pack and it works well and you still get a long flight time. But now I've just got stupid long flight time. And then the camera in the front is the GoPro Hero 4 Black. I brought some new Zeiss Cinemizer goggles, but I couldn't get them to work with the AV signal from the receiver so i'm not using those i'm using the fat sharks but i was going to use those i've got the vector osd in here and the return to home works great and it's definitely saved my butt it even saved my butt today when the video faded out like it just did there when i first took off and i didn't really know what was happening i put it into return to home and it came right back so even then like don't fly a long range without return to home. So I'm using Dragon Link, like I said, and I'm still on low power setting. And it still has control. I don't, the R, RSSI isn't working though, and I'm not sure why. I've never been able to get it to work on this plane. So I don't know exactly what my signal strength is, but it still has control. So I don't even think I'll need to go to high power. And I think that if I, you know, if I do lose connection, it'll just fly back, so that's okay. Video signal's a little bit poor now. I'm gonna tilt, pan, turn towards the mountain just to get a different view. Wow, that hillside is actually not too far underneath me. So far, I'm 13.6 miles out, so that's definitely farther than I've ever gone before. I do wonder what would happen if I flew into restricted airspace. Probably nothing. I doubt radar can detect a foam plane, but they might be able to pick up the radio signals from it. I was flying here a few days ago, and my video is kind of cutting out like, like this. Or, oh, this is so weird. It's like a certain position where I put my UHF and the video just goes berserk, like right here. And if I move over here, it's fine. Um, but anyways, I was experiencing that a few days ago and I thought I could potentially be getting my signal jammed, but that's not, that's not it. Uh-oh, oh shit. Wow, what the fuck? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wow, something's really bad. Wow, that thing was just in a tumble dive. I think I finally met the end of my UHF range or something because it just started to freak out. I think the plane was flipping and stuff because I saw the artificial horizon go berserk. It sure looked like it from the little bit of weak video signal that I had. And now it's just in return to home. I think return to home and switching to high power on the UHF saved me there. Okay, so if the plane lost signal and the 
control surface positions just went random, then that means my, uh, my failsafe is set up incorrectly. So if that's true, then note to self, oh, there it is again, fudge. Okay, what's happening? Come on, come on. Hi. Oh, no, please, come on, don't crash. My video signal is completely gone. No idea what's happening right now. Oh, joy. Yep, still no video signal. Huh. Well, that is so unfortunate. Still have no video signal. It's been like three minutes probably since it cut out. I guess that's the price you pay for doing cool stuff long range FPV. Okay, well, I guess I will just wait around here and see if the plane returns to home. And if not, I'll go try and look for it. Cause I kind of had a general idea of where it would have gone down, but not really a specific idea. So I've been waiting for about 30 minutes for the plane to somehow miraculously return to home and it hasn't come back. So I'm not very hopeful at this point. But on the bright side, I do have this giant bottle rocket that I built. It's basically this, uh, this D-sized Estes rocket motor on a stick in a barricade. So I'm gonna light it and see what happens. Wow, it went pretty high. That's cool. So now we're just headed out to that hill that's straight ahead. Um, I waited about 40 minutes and there was no plane. So we're just gonna drive out there and see if I can find it. So I've arrived at these mountains that I was flying over. And it is kind of unfortunate that I lost the plane over mountains, or at least I think I did, but because everywhere else is just so flat, but at least it gives me some sort of landmark to kind of search around. So I'm just gonna drive kind of around the mountain and see if I can see anything from the road. And if not, then I'll break out the Phantom 4 and use that to search. Unfortunately though, I don't have a, I don't have a computer, so I can't really review the footage in high definition. It would be nice to have a computer, should have brought one. Just did one flight kind of covering this side of the mountain and I didn't find anything, couldn't see anything. So I'm gonna kind of come around to the back side and see if I can see, or I'll do another flight on the back side, see if I can kind of drive up towards that way. So I just finished the second and final phantom battery that I had and there's a lot of little white blobs on the ground but I really couldn't see anything from my phone screen so I'll have to go home and go on the computer and search through those video files but I mean I guess at this point there's not really a whole lot I can do because walking around and looking on foot is not really practical. That's a big beetle. So I hiked up this hillside here to get a better view of the surrounding landscape. And although it is a nice view, I don't see the airplane anywhere. Wow, there's some nice cactuses. Here's the view from the other side of the hill. Looks like there's some sort of fresh water spring over here. Maybe I'll have to go check that out. Wow, look at that, an owl. Where'd it go? seriously impressive. There were a bunch of owls in this tree. 
there were three, three whole owls. So here we are at some place called Horseshoe Springs. Apparently pioneers and stuff went here to get water. It's actually a decent amount of water, which is kind of surprising for out here because you wouldn't really expect any water, except, I mean, there are mountains up there that probably have a lot of snow melt coming down from them. But I don't think this is a, a stream. I think it's just a spring. They've got bass and carp, non-native. I wonder why, who put them here? It says you can shoot the fish with your crossbow. Dope. These people were gonna go swimming. Does not sound like a very good idea. It's kind of gross, like this is all mud. I think it looks like water's seeping out of the ground here. I'm assuming that these ponds and stuff are here because the water just seeps into the ground up in the mountains and then pops up here. Dude, it's kind of mucky. Didn't want to drink it because I'm sure it's not worthy of drinking. Yeah, it's kind of a... Uh, it's kind of really salty. I mean, it's not like super salty, but it's... Kind of salty. I see kind of this weird brownish haze that like kind of sits not low, but like up at the level of the mountain tops. It's kind of odd. Wow, look at that. There's a house. Someone actually lives out here. Look at this little corral type thing. It looks like something out of a Western movie. Then there's some shipping containers up there on the hillside like a mobile home like what goes on up there I'm s I just am so curious about what that is there's another one look at that it's, a sh it's like a mobile home what happens there yeah okay do you see it it's this layer of haze in the sky I could be very wrong but I'm pretty sure that's all pollution from this one factory that's on the other side of the highway here it's the US magnesium plant I noticed it this morning too, but this morning it was like up over these mountains right here. We did drone surfing near that factory too. It was kind of out there. Maybe I'll fly FPV to it one day and creep on them, see what's going on. So after reviewing the phantom footage last time, I really didn't see anything. Um, and that's probably mostly because I was flying at really high altitudes. And if I would have seen the plane on the ground, it would have just been a tiny little white speck and there were a lot of white rocks so it was kind of hard to pick out what might be the plane and what might be just a rock but then i went back to the fpv recorded live feed and looked at the coordinates that were displayed on the screen by the vector autopilot and i put those into google maps and it gave me a location and then I went back to the Phantom video and kind of searched around that location and I just happened to actually have flown close to that location with the Phantom when I was searching. And sure enough, in the Phantom video, there's actually a white thing on the ground that looks like it could be an airplane. So then I went on Google Earth and checked if that white thing was there when the satellite took the image and it was not. So that means it's not just a white rock. So then I drove back out here two days later to see if that white dot is really the plane. Here we are, two days later. So the plane actually crashed, if, if the white dot is the plane, it crashed somewhat close to this weird little place called Ice Iosepa. And this is really interesting. It's like just in the middle of nowhere. It's like this little kind of event center gazebo type thing. But the really interesting part is, so it turns out this is a cemetery, but I'll come back after I go search for the Skywalker, or the Sky Hunter rather, because I really want to find it. But this is interesting. It's not just any cemetery. So I've got the location of where I think the plane is saved on my phone. This is a big hole in the ground. I wonder where that thing is. Anyways, I'm hiking up the hill to get within line of sight of the location. I've got the Phantom here. It's really just the randomness of this place that blows my mind. Like, look how big this valley is. There's just nothing here. And then, randomly, there's a metal crab in the ground. And of course, being in the middle of nowhere, it has bullet holes in it, but still, it's just like, what? So I walked up here and really had no idea exactly where it is, so I looked at my phone and actually the plane should be about 200 feet ahead of me there. 
Um, and I could just go walk up and see, but for a dramatic reveal, I'm gonna just fly over there with the Phantom. Wow, biggest letdown ever. So, seeing how small these looked from the Phantom, that makes me think that the plane, like these are decently large. I mean, the plane's pretty big too, but it's not as wide and it might not be just laying flat like that. So I probably wouldn't be able to see the plane as well from the Phantom. I do see something white up on the hillside there though. So I figured I'd cruise up the hill to get a better view of the area and also see what this white thing is. Ooh, it's rocky. That actually looks like it could be it. Like, there's a water bottle here. Like, who on earth comes up here? Like, I would never think to come up here unless I was looking for a crashed plane. And speaking of crashed planes, I think I found a crashed plane. Yeah, that is it. Wow, I've never been so happy to see a plane so destroyed. Damn. Woo, this is like actually really close to where the coordinates say it was. Oh wow, oh wow, this is bad. This is the whole reason I really wanted to get the plane back was for this guy. And uh, it hit hard enough to destroy the housing. Like, not just destroy, but like completely destroy the housing. Wow. Look at this, here's the FPV camera. Just uber fudged up. Even the image sensor is gone. The sensor got ripped right off the circuit board. Like, that must have been a hard crash. That is one destroyed GoPro. Even the memory card is like jammed back up into it. Okay, I'm gonna need to go get my backpack to carry all these little tids and bits down. But I will carry the main part down with me. So here are the batteries. Entire, I mean, it's destroyed, but it's like it's still in one piece. This one just got worked. This one must have been in the front. And you can see that it hit nose first because it is just exploded. Yeah, and the cells even broke open. You can see the inside of the cells. This was probably smoking, although I don't see any like, I don't see any signs of heat. So that's interesting. Even the little battery for the FPV and the OSD got worked. It used to kind of be like a rectangular bar. Now it's like a, almost like a tube. I don't know, it's just really deformed. Here's the current sensor from the vector. It doesn't look too bad. It could be in working condition still. This is a <laughs> GPS receiver. Here's the cloverleaf antenna. It's actually probably fixable. It could just be bent back in shape. But the low pass filter I had on the uh, transmitter antenna got broken in half, so that's unfortunate. I still can't believe that this crash had enough force to break the GoPro housing in half. It's insane. Yeah, this thing must have just gone straight into the ground from way up high and just, yeah, straight down. I guess this area isn't the most random place because there is a road not too far down there, but like, like this mountain range over here, 
Like that is the most random location. Like if I were hiding a body, I would probably want to hide it like right over there or something because like there's nothing on that side of this valley. There's no roads or anything. And on the other side of that mountain range is the salt flat desert, which is just incredibly vast and empty. So it's just like, I guess finding a water bottle here is like not super unlikely, but finding one over there would be like, what is going on? Why was someone in this geographical location? The video transmitter looks a little bent by the SMA connector, but it might work, I don't know. The Dragon Link receiver doesn't actually look that damaged. Now, oh yeah, ooh, the Vector autopilot system. Dang, that was like deep in the plane. It never came out of the plane. And it still hit hard enough to completely break open the case for the Vector. Wow, that must have been quite the impact. It's all scratched up and it didn't even leave the plane. That can't be good. Hopefully it works, because these things are great. I did just realize that I don't know where the motor is. So I've got everything now, the Phantom, the Sky Hunter, which is partially just in my backpack. So I'm going to head back down to the car. All right, let's go check out the cemetery. Iosepa Settlement Cemetery. Mormon church converts from Polynesia settled in Skull Valley. Interesting, so it sounds like a bunch of missionaries from the Mormon church went to Hawaii and converted a bunch of Hawaiians and they came out here to work for an agricultural company that Wow, that like how do you grow stuff out here because most of it's salt, I don't know. And they lived here for a hot sec few years and then a temple was opened in Hawaii so they went back there. Let's see what this thing says. It's gonna be kind of hard to read. It says the cemetery is about a mile northeast of the settlement. So that must be it down there or what used to be it. This is interesting. This town IOC Iosepa won the state prize in 1911 for the best kept town and the most progressive settlement, the most progressive city in the state of Utah. There's a lot of bead shell necklaces. <coughs> Bless me. Yeah, I had no idea that any of this existed before this whole Sky Hunter ordeal began. So it looks like this thing behind me is like a, like a community center of sorts for the Mormon Hawaiian Pacific Islander community. They got some basketball hoops. They got a teeter-totter alligator. They got chairs, a little stage, some garages to keep stuff in. Hey, they have a rainwater collection system. That's cool. So I have one more phantom battery, so I figured I'd use it. I'm just gonna climb up as high as I can here over this valley just to see kind of what it looks like. I'm surprised at how much water there is and how much greenery there is in this valley because all that white stuff you see is just salt. And it's weird that plants can grow in that. Whee, going so fast. Maybe that'll look cool. Oh, <laughs> that's a uh, slightly problematic ah, phantom. It's just a little too steep and a little too jittery. This thing's are pretty durable though. Like, I bet it's fine. Wow, good as new. Well, I think that concludes this video. Still to this day, I have never actually lost a plane. I've had 
planes uh, go down that took a while to find, but I've never actually lost one. So hopefully it stays like that. Anyways, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.